Today, guys, we are going on the ultimate Chinese breakfast tour here in Beijing. We're going to be exploring the hutongs, the narrow streets and alleyways of Beijing with a local guide who's going to be taking us to the best places to eat that you probably won't be able to find yourself. Okay, guys, so we have met our local guide here, Kelly, who you're from Beijing, right? Right, I'm from Beijing. Nice meeting you all. And so Kelly's going to be taking us around different hutongs mm -hmm. and that's to try very local foods. Right, right. And uh, we're going to be trying a lot of foods, right, Kelly? Right, a really authentic Beijing breakfast tour in a hutong area, a real hutong life. You're going to see that. This looks very uh, traditional. Yeah, I love it. It is very busy in here, guys. You can see. Is is it always this busy in here? Yeah. Yeah. And actually today is uh, not so busy. During the weekend, usually they'll be busier. Ah. You won't be able to get a table. Right. Full okay. main Yeah, but I love this style of cafeteria. This looks awesome. So the snacks I picked up for you guys actually used to be the imperial snacks. That did you say? Uh, used to be only available among the royals because some of them has really rare material to make at that time hundreds of years ago or has really difficult technique to make that's why even today it's easy to get you can see sold in the window everybody could have it but still when you look around no one is having this for breakfast yeah. actually this is today is also our special food we locals will only have it on a special occasion, like mm -hmm. some Chinese festival, mm -hmm. or like a big family reunion, or you when you visit your friends, mm -hmm. you can buy some of these as a little bit. So without knife and fork, this is the easiest for me to cut, as you can see, the texture. Yeah, cutting it like butter with it's the chopsticks. Right, right, right. This is what we call the yellow pea cake. So as the name tells, it's made of yellow pea. And as you can try, the texture of it would be really creamy and soft. Because for the royals, long time ago here in China, they treat this as baby food. Baby, baby food. food. <laughs> this is baby food. Do we put the whole thing in? Yeah, I have to. You can just oh, okay. nibble it. Okay, let's have a little nibble. Yeah, where you really like it, you can have the rest. Mm. Ooh. See? Very it has a creamy. strong flavor of the peas. Because mm. it is True. a really traditional. Wow. When we say it's a traditional, nothing modern technique involved here. So just a steam peas and smash it. A steam smash after several different rounds to make it really, really like the texture. So it's very like mushy. Mm -hmm. It tastes uh, like Kelly said, like really like peas, but it's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. Yeah, because we add a little honey inside. Mm. This is our next one. Uh, this is also really very special. This is what we call purple rice ball. Purple rice ball. Mm. Purple rice ball. So it's going to be purple inside, so, I guess. Right. Again, as the name tells, it should be made of purple rice so when i cut it open you can see it's a purple rice purple, uh, yeah. it's definitely mm. a different color the purple rice in the middle and covered with the sesame on the surface so in china we do have so many color rice these are all natural these are not gmo so they are natural nice mm, like this. so we not only have purple rice but we also have black rice red rice green rice yellow rice all, all natural, all no natural. colorings. Just no colorings. Wow, that's they are so born interesting. To be that way. I've never, <laughs> I've never heard of that before. I thought it was just they added coloring no, no, to them. No, no. Okay. It's natural. Green, red, and the black, yellow, and the purple. It's colorful. That's, it's like a rainbow. Yeah. All right, cheers. Cheers. Mmm. It's so chewy. Mm -hmm. Because it's sticky rice. Mm -hmm. So long time ago, the average person couldn't have the uh, color rice. So you know, the regular food here would be the white rice, mm -hmm. and it's like our simple food. We mm -hmm. eat white rice every day. But when the rice got color, it actually means more nutritious, mm -hmm. more expensive. This is the most famous snacks um. in Beijing. Uh, it's also got a very interesting name. We locals call it rolling donkey. Rolling, rolling donkey. Rolling wow. donkey. Mm -hmm. But no donkey meat at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad for that. <laughs> so, we, uh, so first you see this uh, layer here, roll. Uh, well, we call it rolling donkey just because the weight of making that looks like a donkey rolled himself on the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to make it even this is so funny. Right, we even have a dirt on the surface because when donkey roll, they got dirt. But this is not a real dirt, but look like a really like a dirtish. Yeah. Uh, but this is a powder of a sesame and the peanuts. It's not ah, real yeah. dirt. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it I, red bean inside? Right, red mm -hmm. bean is not chocolate. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, I, I love chocolate. Uh, these are traditional things. So yeah. hundreds of years ago, yeah. chocolate. Little chocolate. Here, right. Everything looks like chocolate. Red beans. Just remember that. It's, it's going to be red beans. It's not chocolate. Right. Uh, the white layer of it here is made of uh, sticky rice again. White sticky rice. We grind it and then we put it into the thin layer on the board and then we put red beans in the middle and begin to roll it and roll it back to make it nice. Let this roll. Mm. And also in Chinese culture, we see donkey is a lazy and a stubborn animal. So when they are reluctant to work, which we always do, they will just roll themselves on the ground. Like a little naughty boy. <laughs> so that's why um, the cook thought maybe this rolling looked like a donkey rolling itself. Very funny. That's why they got this interesting name, rolling, rolling donkey. donkey. So next time we go this way, and this is a green one. Now we also so have a rainbow. Can you read Chinese or speak a little bit? I can't read, no. <laughs> 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 like zero. <laughs> this, uh, uh, this character just means uh, yummy. 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 Uh -huh. Okay. Yummy fresh. Yeah. So this one should be the best one. This one is drier. I mm. like it, but it's also sweeter a little bit. Oh, right, sweeter. I think I like this one the most. Mm. Really? I have a sweet tooth. Oh. So this one's the sweetest one. This is also very fruity because it's a jelly made of a very special fruit Ooh. called porcelain. Looks very jelly-like. Very fruity. Ooh. You can tell. It's it is very. Sour. It's very different to the rest of them. Yeah, I like it. I know Carolina would love this one because she loves her fruits. I like fruits. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a dried fruit. It is quite sour. Wow. It will help you to lose weight. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to try some more of this. Eat it. <laughs> That's why now it's really popular among the young ladies here in China. When okay. they, yeah, they want to lose weight. Well, look good. Well, look slim. So now we move on to the last one. Last um, one. Uh, this is uh, the most important snack among everything we try mm. because this used to be Sisi's favorite food. Not Sisi. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, also known as a dragon lady. Yeah. She was a mother of the last two emperors here in China. Yeah. Uh, that is to say, in that period of time, she was the VIP of the royals. Yeah, I, I called her Sissi. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're saying Sissi. She was the mother of two em emperors. Last, last emperor. ones. The last, uh, last two emperors. Yeah. Okay. And also, according to the history, we know that when the last two emperors became in that position, both of them were just a little born. Five years old oh. or seven years old. So that's why you can imagine the great power of the whole nation at that time still lied in the lady's head. So uh -huh. this is her favorite food. You can oh, it's sesame inside? Yeah, the wrapper is uh, made of sticky rice again. And when I cut it open, you can see... There's some different uh, colors. Oh yeah, different colors. It's first is our uh, horse like this, the red. And the green things is preserved fruit. And the white powder and the sugar together with coconut. Yeah, that's I right. wanted to say that it's like ah. shredded coconut. Yeah, that's why this is really special. You know, this is a really very north area here in mm. China. Mmm, so that tastes really good. What do you think? Is the, the dragon lady's snack is my favorite <laughs> snack. Yeah, the sweetest one, I think. Mm -hmm. She has mm. a good taste. <laughs> she definitely has good taste. Without knife and fork. This is the hardest for me to cut. You see the texture. Yeah, it's really hard to cut. Maybe with a spoon? Yeah, only with a spoon. So I, I practice it looks a lot. like French pastry. Uh, it's like a, maybe like croissant. Yeah. Uh, but no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a croissant. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So, so this Just is made of... Kelly's a, offended. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Because most people think the shape is like... I, yeah. I, I like croissant myself. I, uh, but uh, this is totally Nothing different. Nothing like Completely this. Completely different. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So first it's made of wheat flour, but when we made the, this dough, you see the layer here. Mm. And between each layer, we add a lot of sesame sauce inside. That's why they become this color, and that's why the texture becomes like, really hard. A, like a little stone for me. This is like a workout for you to open so, this up. Uh, so it's this kind is of the gooey. hardest for me to cut, cut, and also this is the only savory and the peppery one. Oh, so it's oh. not sweet? No. Interesting. I'm a little bit worried because I was like, uh -huh. I wanted it to be sweet, but now it's savory. Mm. I've never tried anything like that before. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to say the same. Mm. Basically, the fresh We're taste. We're China. Mm. <laughs> it's, very, it's very dry. Mm -hmm. 
I need some water. <laughs> because <laughs> we need some water. The first taste is like the pepper for pepper? me. Mm -hmm. And then the sesame comes along. Right, right, right. And then the wheat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wheat. Are kind of like bready. Very bready, very, very dry. Bready because made of wheat flour. Okay. This is our real breakfast of food. The previous things are all snacks, whatever. Yeah. So when we came back to the train station, we saw a lot of people having this. Uh, this maybe uh, having uh, some from uh, the uh, soup, uh, but uh, definitely uh, not the uh, same uh, thing. Okay. Oh. That's why this is your challenge. So first you just try the soup, I will, then I will tell you what's inside. But I promise you, totally eatable. It's <laughs> edible, okay. okay. Nothing weird. Will you not try to trick us, Kelly? Uh, it's <laughs> No meat, no fish, what, what, vegan. What, 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 yeah, looks very yeah. bland. Oh, oh. <laughs> look, look at his face. Uh -huh. It's sour. Oh. oh, wow. I wasn't it's expecting that. So this is exactly right. I think it's, it's something video. fermented. No. This is, your this, is a this is why you call it a challenge. Right. Is this fermented? Right, right, it's fermented. Oh, not, not for me. <laughs> that is um, very weird taste. Oh, that's very strange. I would call it like sauerkraut. Fermented, but it's like probably it's some sort of bean or like tofu. Very sour, very, right. very fermented. So first we put it then break it all up uh, uh, into, into little pieces. pieces, and then uh, yeah. and then a little soup, a little soup, and then put this uh, dough ring and then the pickles. Oh. Add the three things together. Oh no, it's time, Jay. Are you sure? Okay, yes. all right. Believe me, and now this become a new story. <laughs> Honest opinion. Better. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> no. Much better because the fried like stick mm -hmm. adds like a more, it balances out the mm -hmm. sourness. Mm -hmm. And uh, then mm. the pickles. And the pickles right. as well. It helps a lot. <laughs> that is definitely much better. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say it's my favorite still, because yeah. the soup, you can still taste the uh -huh. strong sourness, but I can understand why you need to have them together. I should say that it's a little bit sad. This traditional food can also date back to hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. At that time, the royals had it every day, but now it's a little sad that it's almost dying out, because it couldn't be any appeal to the younger generation. So I should say it's more like a fire taste. Fire taste. That's mm -hmm. why we you can take a look. Most people having this are kind of like a o older uh, uh, people. Right, mm. older people. Because they grew up with that, they had it every day, they get used to that, finally it's falling out with that. When the other Chinese visit Beijing from other city, they would also try want to try this yeah. to, to, t to see how it looks like, how it tastes. And they're shocked like me sometimes. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah, we say it's a criteria to judge whether you are authentic Beijing. Or ah, <laughs> so I'm not authentic Beijing. <laughs> As you can see, everything's on the table. First, it's made of wheat flour, and they divide this into the dough, like an army here. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, this is a, they are preparing our area, but now no one's doing here. Uh, but the, uh, the second step, they will stretch this dough into a long uh, shape and put the beef. The second bowl is the beef, the red meat, in the middle and begin to roll it. And then the f finally they smash it and it automatically turns into pie. I don't know why, but... <laughs> <laughs> like the pie is in the back, right? In the back there, yeah. Right, right. And then all the pie will go back in that pan. It got a special function of pan, pan fried and also steam, steaming function. So... Uh, That's why it's fluffy. So the pie would be uh, crispy on the surface and also uh, fluffy and uh, soft inside. And uh, this, uh, look at that. The third, the third bowl, uh, a lot of uh, brown powder. Yeah, the powder over there. There. So that is a very important ingredient. Uh, the, it is a mixture of all peppers, all peppers, just name it. Black pepper, white pepper, and Sichuan pepper. Sichuan, Sichuan pepper. You know wow. Sichuan pepper? Yeah. Which will give you a little numbing taste later. So mm. you are not poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> the Sichuan pepper. So this is, uh, what is this called again? Imperial beef pie. So is this something that the royals would also yeah, eat? Just because I mentioned that the, the beef used to be ah, the you did. food only. That's why we also call it imperial uh, beef pie. The Chinese name is on Gongqing Xiang Rou. Literally means imperial tasty beef pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Here one for go. you. It's warm. Okay guys, so we're gonna try the Imperial Beef, beef Pie. Beef pie. Let's give this a go. This is your favorite, Kelly. Right, yeah. this is my favorite. 
you've been enjoying it. <laughs> mm, juicy inside and peppery. Mm. Very peppery, but also very moist inside. Mm -hmm. Why is this one your favorite, Kelly? Um, first, they got beef. Beef, yes. And then uh, it's a really crispy on the surface. The texture mm. gives a different layer. And inside it's still uh, soft and uh, yeah, very peppery. So I have a question for you, Kelly. I know you're eating, but um, is it okay to be walking and eating and drinking on the streets here? Or do you have to stand still? Uh, we can eat along the street, of course. On the street, okay. So you don't litter? No littering, of course, yes. Look! Yeah, people eat. <laughs> there are people literally uh, eating along the street here. So there you go. That's proof that you don't need to uh, worry about that. <laughs> yeah. but anyway, so breakfast food is more like a snack you need them to sit down to enjoy it mm. and people really are in a rush so you just grab everything in your hand on the way to work but, or mm -hmm. but don't litter again no littering so you've said that actually hutongs are mongolian right it's a mongolian language because it was a mongolian who built hutong at the very first time 800 years ago so in mongolian language hutong just means small alley as you can yeah. see very narrow so we're in a hutong right now Right, in the Hutong. And this is a book. And book anytime would mean knowledge. So it's so, like a teacher? Right, right, smart. So that means uh, in <laughs> the smart. history, in the past, that would be a learned man, like you said, teacher mm -hmm. or scholar or professor. So in the Hutong area, actually, each of these courtyards, they have no private restroom. That's why in the Hutong, we can see this public restroom everywhere. Like from yeah, I've seen a lot of them. I thought there was just like public so toilets. So all of the residents are actually using them. Right, right, right. Wow. So these might be the uh, the really cleanest toilet you ever, you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. and, pu and public can go into there as well? Like, of course, yeah. of course. Everyone. So for you, it's a public restroom, but for them, it's their private. Oh. Because everybody living here are using this. It's so well maintained. It's mm -hmm. very clean. But just one problem, they have no divisions. That's what, no privacy. No privacy, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you mean inside of there, every, it, there's no private uh, cubicle? No oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you get to know your neighbor very well then. Right, and they have no sink. <laughs> most of, uh -huh. most of these uh, toilets have no sink. So when yeah. they finish, they just go back to wash their hands. Okay. Ah. And as you can see, this is really new. Yeah, so it's quite also new. newly built by the government in recent years. So that's why I said we really have a tremendous change in the Hutong area. Maybe a mm -hmm. long time ago, some of the foreign friends have already visited Hutong. They have the uh, image of the uh, shitty world. Okay, <laughs> guys, so we are at the next stop <laughs> over here. I wonder what we're going to be having. Is this what we're having here? Uh, it's called fried pancake. Fried pancake, and that's the thing that she's frying just oil. over there. Hot oil. So this is the first one. This is what we call the tofu brains. Tofu brains, okay. Yeah. So uh, take it easy, just a name. No yeah. Brain There's brain. no brains there, it's just tofu. Just tofu yeah. seasoned with soybean sauce together with the eggs and mushroom. Mm -hmm. ah. So this is a savory one because. It uh, looks like a sweet one. Uh, right. In the uh, north part of China, people prefer savory. That's why here we have the salty version of tofu grain, but when you travel to uh, the south, like Shanghai, oh, wow. Zhou, or the next stop, you could probably try the sweet, sweet version, version of tofu grain. And here in China, we have a heated debate about which version is the mm. like south versus the north. Mm -hmm. No clear winner to today. Sure. <laughs> but we have a v mm. different types of tofu Ooh. here in China. It's all made of It's very soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tender tofu. We call it tender tofu. Mm -hmm. Tender tofu, mushroom. but I can also um, taste a bit of like these mushrooms. Mushrooms. This is also uh, very yummy and very yeah. special. Also my favorite. And inside it's a uh, uh, leek together. The white part is a uh, um, tofu. Garlic? Tofu and eggs. Ah. Tofu and eggs. Okay. Karina will be happy. Yeah. And actually I said before that everything is so doughy and Kelly explained that actually in the north like you're growing wheat. So this is very interesting because it's very like doughy and bready. Yeah. Alright, go for it. We saw fresh leek and eggs inside. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Is there garlic inside of here? Only leek. Yeah. No mm. garlic. It tastes like garlic. It tastes like garlic, mm. right? That's so good. Now this is our next bowser. This is what we call the bowser. Mm -hmm. But it's like a huge bowser. Mmm, massive. <laughs> <laughs> when 
but I cut it open, you can see. Mm. It's a carrot and lemon chili and the black things. It's a woodier um, mm. mushroom. It looks so colorful. So I'm eating the rainbow. Yeah, we really like our eating philosophy is the eating variety. Mm -hmm. So if variety first it should be colorful. I like it. That means it. a different things, different food, different yeah. material. I like it because mm. it's all of the things that I like: carrots, eggs, vermicelli. Mm. Uh, this this type of vermicelli uh, actually is made of uh, potato, and uh, this got uh, beef inside. Uh, this is uh, very special. They even have little soup. See? Ah, oh, some soup inside of there. The beef has so much flavor in there, mm. and the bao is very soft. And what happens is, is the juices yeah. absorbs into the right, into the, the bread. Mm. Mm. So it like absorbs into there, and then you get this kind of juicy mouthful. Right, right. Really delicious. Okay, this is uh, the sweet part of this stuff, <laughs> and now we try the first one. This is also about the butter again with a different shape. Mm -hmm. Let uh, me guess. Inside there's red bean. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so funny. Ah, see. It's a like a chocolate, but it's red bean again. But this red bean also is very special. You can see it's a really like smoothie. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm, because that's uh, smooth it, texture. Yeah, it's it a, looks so tempting. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, a steam and smash for so many different so rounds to make it like it's so soft. Yeah. Chinese like chocolate, it. but it's not. It's red bean. <laughs> But I also like it because it's warm. You are mm. right, it's fresh made. Mm. People even mm. think it's a healthier than chocolate. Mm. I like the uh, oh, no. kind of squish, oh, no. like this kind of soft, <laughs> it's like a pillow. Mm -hmm. Because they got yeast. Stress ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they got yeast. Uh, yeast. Mm -hmm. uh, yeast. Cinnamon roll. Mm. There's a cinnamon roll. It looks and, like um, it. Maybe it's not the same cinnamon roll as you can imagine, but it's still a cinnamon roll. But it's not only a cinnamon, but still with a lot of brown sugar. Brown sugar, that's and the brown sugar on the outside. Right, and the sesame sauce all together. Is there any red bean in this or is it no, just no? No, no, no. What's the name of this one? Chinese name? Yeah. Tang Hua Jiao. Can you say that? Tang Hua Jiao. Close enough? <laughs> no. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> not, so not close enough. <laughs> so guys, sorry to tell you. This is a highlight. This is the highlight, okay. <laughs> and this is also my personal favorite, but I really want to save it to the last. Maybe you have no enough it's space for this, but... I, I'm sure I will, because I do like deep fried things. Yeah. I think this it, it might be even your favorite. Mm, maybe you can try this one, see? Oh, it's like a pizza. Uh, this is a brown sugar pancake. It's a man. This is really normal. Brown sugar pancake. Yeah, it's a, it's a made of wheat flour. Mm -hmm. like a pancake over there, they, they do it in the container with a lot of hot oil and mm -hmm. deep fry. Beijing okay. has this side. Yeah, I can see it. It looks ah. like kind of like chocolatey. Like what is the that on the top? This is the brown sugar on the top. Okay. Uh, but it's not as easy as you imagine. They just put the brown sugar on the top. No, it's combined together. It's like a... Just try Gonna this. try it. <laughs> okay, so it's like a almost like a little pizza. Give this a go. Mmm, yes. See? Jay's Deep favorite. fried goodness, yeah. So it's uh, really crispy, mm -hmm. very sugary, mm -hmm. and you have like that kind of deep fried oil flavor, which people love. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. So the other table, the other, the other gentleman is having the ordinary fried pancake mm -hmm. without brown sugar, because mm -hmm. this type of bro fried brown sugar pancake is easily sold out. This is the, the last this one. Is, this is the last one. Because I made a reservation yesterday. Oh, oh, you made a reservation just for this? Each time before the tour, we should make a reservation. Otherwise, yeah. when we get here... Yeah, it'll be sold out. out. People know what's yeah, the best. That's why the others could only have this uh, ordinary... The ordinary side. ...dry pancake mm -hmm. without this part. Well, we're lucky because Kelly is a great tour guide, so we have the brown sugar version. <laughs> so this is our next stop. The very famous uh, handmade egg filled pancake. Egg filled pancake. See, first it's made of wheat flour, and the man is doing this. Uh, okay, uh, spread the, the dough into a round pancake over there. That's a pan, mm -hmm. got a little pan fried like that. Mm -hmm. And later, when it's got almost ready, he would use this long chopstick. 
to cut a hole in the middle of the pancake and then filling the eggs. And he's gonna make a hole. Oh, he make he makes a hole like that. Okay. Yeah, cut a hole in the middle. Uh, very skillful. And then filling the eggs. And that's it. Wow. This is amazing. Wei la. Wei la. Wei la. Wei la. Slightly spicy. Wei la. Wei la. Xie xie. So he's spreading the chili sauce and we got the lettuce. lettuce. And, uh, and put it over this is the Chinese taco. Right, Chinese taco. Oh, xie xie. It's very crunchy from the outside, like I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can you taste the egg? Yeah, it's a very strong egg flavor. Yeah. And it's very warm, crispy. And the spicy like paste is a bit... It's like a fermented bean. Yeah. Yeah, fermented mm -hmm. yeah. bean. Here in China, we have a similar saying that it's, uh, in the morning you should eat it as a king. In the afternoon, you should eat it as a noble. For the evening, like the dinner, you should eat as a beggar. As a beggar. A beggar. Yeah. So mm. you start off as a royal, then a noble, and then a beggar. So you right. eat more. You eat more in breakfast time. Right. Mm -hmm. So we say uh, breakfast is like the most important meal for three. And also, if you eat a lot in the whole day, you have the whole day to digest. So this is our last, last food, food stop. stop. Uh, so, yeah, this is our last stop. Uh, here we're going to try the lamb soup on the top. So lamb yummy. soup? Lamb soup. You know the western food will begin with the soup, whereas the Chinese one will be end with the soup. So our theory is that to fill in the cracks, if there are still any. Yeah. So now we're going to have Now we're going to fill out the rest of our space up, right. if there is any, with some soup. Ooh. Oh, it's a very strong smell. You can smell, smell it, wow, yeah. really strong, like, yeah. spices. Yeah. Is it the lamb, actually? Yeah. It's the smell of the lamb. Yeah, it's the lamb. Yes. Is that the uh, soup? Yeah, so first, let's take a look at the soup. The soup has been cooked here in a big pot over there for over 10 hours. 10 hours? Yeah, using the lamb's bones and meat. 10 hours. Ten hours. Sure everything from the meat of bones That's why the soup became milky. That's why you have the milky um, kind of look to the soup. This is <laughs> such a big pot. Yeah, yeah. big pot. Will I've they never sell seen all anything that? Like this. They will sell the whole mm, pot? For one day, yes. In one day? Wow. And there's such a strong smell of... Um, like, is that spices or is that just the lamb? Lamb. Also with a uh, white pepper. White pepper, yes, that's yeah, what, what I'm smelling. White yeah. pepper and lamb, um, that's the companion, not together. So here we're going to try the uh, lamb soup together with a very special sesame bread and also a very special tofu salad. And this is chef? Yeah, this is chef. He's the master chef. Yeah, master chef. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a tofu is salad. Tofu. Soda. Yeah. I've seen this one as I've well. I've seen this one. Like it's very people... popular. Yeah, very popular. It's uh, what kind it's of flavor orange? is it? Sorry. Uh, orange soda. Orange soda. And the name of the brand is. Uh, mm. <laughs> Pacific. Pacific. Because uh -huh. there's a polar bear. Yeah. It's yeah. Pacific. I don't know why. It's just a. In Chinese, it's. Beijing Yang. Beijing Yang. Yeah, Beijing Yang just means Pacific. Looks so refreshing. Thank you. Cheers. I'm looking forward to this because actually I'm quite thirsty after all the food we've been having. It tastes just like Fanta. <laughs> yeah? It tastes exactly like Fanta. What do you think of the uh, setup here? I really currently? actually like the interior. Like basically over there it's very beautiful, but also the pottery. All these little pots, yeah. Yeah, I like the plates as well. And do you know the... Oh, the salad's ready. Salad's yeah. ready, yeah. So this is a tofu. So, yeah, yeah, that's okay. okay. Uh, what I've really liked about this tour is that everyone in these little shops and businesses have been friendly. Like, yeah. they, you don't feel uh, strange or awkward. They all smile at you and they're happy to have you in their place. Yeah, you feel very welcome. Place. You feel welcome, exactly. and, the, and we can see the faces and they're happy that we are enjoying their foods. Mm -hmm. The soup has arrived. Ooh. It's piping hot. That smells delightful, honestly. This could be the best soup we've ever had. Woo! Very fresh herbs in there. 
And this is interesting because it, it's a noodle made out of, was it? Tofu. Tofu. So there's a stew, another sesame bread to come. Oh, we've got sesame bread to come. Again, Hot. Kelly trying to fatten us up before we leave right. Beijing. In the soup, we just have the lamb meat. Mm -hmm. the ordinary lamb meat. Mm. Because, I should emphasize that, because sometimes when you try the soup, you should be really cautious here. Uh, because sometimes inside the soup, there will be some organs. Ah, organs, ah, ah I yes. thought the bones. <laughs> you, bones is okay. We did, we saw, liver, we saw a yeah. liver or was it a kidney? Kidney. kidney. Yeah. We saw a kidney. Stomach. Some yeah, we've seen some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some weird things. Some weird stuff, yeah. But you would but like it, right? People, like Chinese people yeah, would Chinese like people it. Eat it. I've noticed that lamb or like mutton is very popular. Is that popular in Beijing or? More Beijing because as I mentioned, the Mongolian used to settle down here, um, running a whole dynasty called the Yuan Dynasty. And after that, the Manchuri came which is a Qing dynasty. Mm. So the two dynasties actually are were the minority group. Okay. That's why they have lamb or even beef. But uh, we Chinese majority, we basically eat pork. More pork. Yeah, because we don't have the land, proper land to raise them. The sheep, yeah. Yeah, like the, the Mongolian or Manchurian, they used to live on the grassland. But the majority Chinese, we just live in the middle of the country. <laughs> See, it's like Very creamy. Meaty soup and that's from it kind of being boiled in the broth for so long so 10 hours mm -hmm. oh yeah that is packed with flavor there's a bit of um is there a bit of chili in there as well uh pepper mm. so pepper you, sometimes people think it's not pepper enough that's why we have extra sauce here yeah. the white pepper salt ah. msg Chili. Oh, that's MSG there. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that there is MSG. Now, what I want to do is, is this baked fresh here, the sesame bread? So, apparently, you I can think just like dip it, it in, yeah. But even you eat it alone, it still wow. uh, tastes has, good. Yeah, has flavor. A little salt, salty. The sesame bread is full of flavor. Yeah, a little bit salty, but salty. with the it soup, kind of hard. it's so delicious. It is really delicious. It absorbs all of that strong flavor yeah. from the soup. Yeah. Mm, very good. Next up is this tofu salad here. So you can see there are these kind of lines on the tofu. And Kelly, you're saying it was because it's the surface of the tofu. Yeah, it's the skin. And this is the... Also regarded as the best part of the tofu. Like essence. Essence. Essence, or the essence of the tofu. Yeah, it looks very nice. It really looks like noodles. Oh, so very it's long. called a salad, but it looks definitely looks like noodles. Let me try this out. Mm. <laughs> Sesame oil. Mm -hmm. I can taste the oil straight away, but it's also a little bit sour. Yeah, vinegar. Vinegar, yeah. Vinegar. And also there's some chives and I think coriander. Coriander. Mm. So. Kelly, uh, this man here is, is this Kung Fu related? Yeah, it's uh, doing the Kung Fu practicing and uh, he would do it every day, even naked, naked, even in cold winter. He, like, that's naked? You are right. Well, okay, not fully naked. Not no, 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 no. <laughs> in the streets. Topless, okay. But in the winter he would do that? Right. Wow. Just like that. Okay. No shirt at all. And it's always busy, uh, bikes and going by and it's a... Yeah. <laughs> um, everything's so silent because everything's electric apart from the bell yeah. um, and so you have to really be careful about right. uh, what's behind you because you can't hear anything <laughs> you can't hear the wheels <laughs> before the toilet or we go um, I like this angle here <laughs> really? yeah yeah there's a toilet just here but there's okay. toilet there's toilets everywhere okay. <laughs> but it's a really nice view of okay. you say it's a stupa, stupa. Okay. what is a stupa Stupa is a special word for the pagoda in Buddhism. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the largest and oldest stupa here in Beijing. Mm -hmm. It's a history of 800 years. It was wow. built by the very first emperor here in Mongolian times. And it was built by a very famous architecture from Nepal. Yeah. Oh, so it was, it was uh, built by uh, someone from Nepal. Right. 
Oh. That's why this is not a Chinese Buddhism stupa. It's more like Tibetan Buddhism mm -hmm. stupa. Oh. This is electric as well. Mm -hmm. so China oh, China Post. For delivery. Okay, that was oh, very stop. silent, yeah. This is our last stop for the coffee here is on cafe. Let's head on to the rooftop. So this is a nice view of the stupa. Stupa, that's that's the word. That, that's someone's Ooh. painting. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Watercolor. Very beautiful. Ah, this is the stupa. Yeah. Oh, you. So you you can see it from here. Yes. Wow. Of course. Yes, that's amazing. This is very impressive. Very beautiful. beautiful. Oh, this looks really nice. I love the interior. Shishu. How beautiful it is. Look at that presentation. So this is the Rizal... Rizal tea? Um, this is a description about this drink. With, uh, <laughs> it's in Chinese. Yeah, Chinese, but uh, with a plum. You can see the plum. And the hot sauce and the mint. And this is Carolina's flat white. Yeah, looks as delicious as always. She's happy because she hasn't had a coffee today, so. Oh, you have coffee today? Yeah, she's struggling <laughs> so without waiting. coffee. Yeah, she's been waiting. So we are going to try this very kind of popular drink here. This is recommended for this coffee shop. Let's give this a go. It looks so beautiful. Oh. Very refreshing. Now I can taste that hawthorn, but it's not as sour as uh, earlier on in today. And you've got the plum on top. But I don't know, is there plum inside of here as well? Yeah. Getting busy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the situation here. This is uh, very typical here in the uh, hutongs to uh, <laughs> have a lot of traffic that is silent. But it's very refreshing, it's fruity. And this is like a popular Chinese drink as well. Especially in summer. In the summertime, so. Help you to reduce the heat. Sun is, it's doing that, it's reducing, because I'm quite hot right now, because it is like, the sun is shining, it's very warm. And we're on the red wall here, which apparently is like a symbol of like, happiness. Right. And it's like a good, it's for like good feelings, good thoughts. Yes. Am I, am I making sense? <laughs> is this right? Yeah, our national flag is also red. And the national flag is also red. Yeah. And we have a Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So we've had all of our food. We are super stuffed. I don't think we're going to be having uh, much food for the rest of the day. And it's really nice that we end off with a coffee uh, because it gives us a bit of energy because we've had so much like digestion happening. But, yeah, um, but what I wanted to emphasize is, is that Kelly took us to the most authentic places that we would never find ourselves. And all of the foods were so delicious, like honestly. And one thing that was really nice about the tour is that Kelly took us to very local areas. You got to experience very local Chinese kind of culture in Beijing so thank you Kelly thank you and thank how did you, you find uh, taking us around we went too hard work on it for um, you it's really fun because <laughs> okay. I also eat a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great yeah. mm -hmm. all right guys so if you want to join one of these tours from Lost Plate, Lost Plate also do tours not just in Beijing, but all over China. We'll put a link in the description. If you use our code JCarolina at checkout, you get $5 off your tour. We thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it didn't make you too hungry. And uh, thank you, Kelly, once again. Thank yeah. you. Welcome to China. And the Lost Plate is waiting for you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.